and uh, and we'll go from there. Um, I did actually want to highlight, remember yesterday, uh, for those of you that were here, I was trying to show how to do screen captures and it wasn't popping up on my end. Um, I think I figured out what was going on. Uh, I had notifications turned off on my Chromebook. So when I did go to my downloads folder, I had a whole bunch of pictures of my hands and the desktop and stuff like that. I think what was actually happening was I was doing the screen capture, but because I have notifications turned off, uh, the do not disturb, it wasn't showing me the pop-up. So it was actually working. Uh, I just wasn't seeing that it was there. So, which, you know what, it's great for something like this. Yeah, it is a little weird. It was a little uh, unnerving because I thought maybe something was affecting it, but but I think we're okay. I think it all works out well. So so we're gonna look at, uh, I'm gonna show you two tools. This one, I, I think today is more of just a fun one to me. Um, yeah, I'll show you absolutely. And because probably they are, stick around after, don't jump out so quick and I will show you, uh, you probably have a Windows keyboard and I do actually have a, a keyboard here that's taped off so I know the exact uh, the exact keys to work. So just stick around after. Um, so today is drawing in, in Google. Uh, there's two tools uh, from Google that are not part of the G Suite that I, I wanna highlight here. Um, it's more of just fun. It is, it is more of just something that that I think uh, I think there's some potential when we start to look at icons and creating some little drawings. Um, but also it's just a tool that maybe if our kids have a touch screen or we're on a mobile device or something like that, it's a simple one that we can jump into. I think these are ideal with touch screens. I want to, uh, this is the, uh, the pen that I'm using. It's got, I'll try and get really close here. It's got a little hard tip on it is the, the stylus that I use on the other end, actually, oh, let me unscrew it. It's got that little sort of goofy nub that we see on lots of the free pens. I'm not a fan of that so much as I am of the hard tip. This one, I just actually got from Amazon and I can, I can share this name later if you want, I won't hold it up. Uh, I just went on Amazon and found the best deal I could. And the reason I liked it is it just came in the box. It came with actually two styluses and a bunch of extra little tips. I dropped the last one I have and the tip is plastic and it broke off and I couldn't get it to go back on. So I didn't remember what model it was. So I couldn't order other tips, but this one has the replaceable ones. Uh, so essentially, even if I never use the other stylus, I have, you know, five, six tips and then a couple of the other ones. So I think it was about 16 bucks when I ordered it. So I'm not sure that I know that they have a similar one with the hard uh, stylus Alice and I don't know exactly which one they have. So so let's jump right into it. You guys didn't uh, come here to see the stylus that I'm using. You came here to see. We're going to start out with uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, Auto draw. I'm going to zoom in on the screen a little bit more. Oops, better select this one. Zoom in just a little bit tighter. So the the URL for this is autodraw.google.com or sorry, autodraw.com, not autodraw.google. Autodraw.com. If you just Google um, autodraw by Google, this is the one that pops up. There's another one. They use this same idea in another uh, in another one that's kind of a game. It's sort of game based, but it's the same. Um, same idea, we'll show you all of this. All of your tools are down the left-hand side. They're the same tools we're used to everywhere. It doesn't give you the nice color palette. It limits it to specific ones. So you can't get really specific in your color palette. Uh, but we do have quite a range of options. It's, it's fairly decent there. We'll stick with black here. Geometric shapes, of course, fill tool, a fill bucket, of course. Text, you can put text in there, of course. Free draw. Of course, does all of our auto or all of our tools have that? But where it really becomes cool, and I know I've shown some people this before, is in the auto draw. So if we take the auto draw and we put it onto that, it starts to think about what we're drawing, and it uses the artificial intelligence to start to guess what we are drawing, and it gives us pieces over on the top in this case that we can select. So if I was trying to draw a bicycle, I can just click on the bicycle that was there, <clears throat> excuse me, and it grabs onto that and just says, okay, you were trying to draw the bicycle, here you go. And it grabs that icon. So I I really think of this 
Let me just undo, we'll go back to my ugly shape there. I really think of this as a tool that potentially moving forward, you need an icon, you're worried about, uh, you're worried about copyright, you're worried about using somebody else's work without giving them the value for that. All of these are available for you to use. All of these are made so that you can go in here and you can create with them and draw and then go from there. It's very easy to get started. Up in the top left-hand corner, the hamburger menu. So, oops. Well, uh, oh, I should uh, bring my mouse and not my stylus. Up here in the top left-hand corner, if we click on that, we'll start over. We'll start with something fresh. Different uh, different stage, I'll use the stage word again. Uh, different stages that we can do. Let's start with a nice background. We're gonna make this blue so we can have a nice blue background. Then we'll switch back to our colors. We'll go back to, uh, let's say, something that, that contrasts there. Uh, maybe a nice purple. We have our free draw tool if we want and we can adjust the size of it. It does get super big. So you do have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but we can do our free draw or we can just jump straight into it and say, okay, we want to draw a truck. And we'll give it a second to see what it can come up with. It might not be perfect, but I see I got a work truck right there that kind of fits in. It grabs the color that you were last using. So once you have that color, uh, you can set that up and you can go from there. You can continue on with your drawing. So we could draw some, oh, we should have changed colors, that's okay. And we can actually jump back into auto draw. If I now wanted to draw, my go-to is always my bunny. If I wanted to draw my bunny that I then brought into that, we can go back and we can add different icons. If I needed to make my drawing a little bit bigger, just gonna zoom out a couple times here. I can grab that bottom corner and I, I can make it fit so that my drawing can go in there. So it's a, a super simple way just to make a drawing. Once we're all done, once we're all happy, we have it exactly as we want. Everything's fit into our stage. We jump up into our hamburger menu again and we download it. Nice thing about these is these guys come out as a PNG file. A PNG file allows us to have set a file as a uh, is transparent. So if we're using this on a web page or if we're using this on another drawing, we just want that front, but we want everything else to be transparent. The PNG file allows us to do that. And I believe if we don't set that background to a color, it will select, it will set that. Save it there. And then you can import that drawing into any of your, uh, any of your documents, any of your slides, any of your, any, anywhere that you want to use it, right? So quick how-to menu on the side. There's a share button. It just shares a link to this actual file. I don't know that I have uh, that much value in there. And then down below, there's also some artists. So these are people who have used this to do creation. And when I came here before, it was actually showing me some other people's works. So I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we have to click on another link here. Oh, there's a zip file. I don't want to download them all, but there was, it was showing me some other people's works there. So, so I'll stop really quick here. And uh, what do you think? Questions? It's a fun, just sort of a silly one. So, so Jason, this is separate to the draw tool that we would find on a doc or a slide then. Yes, that's exactly right, Allison. This is this is actually it's called a AI experiment. So Google does some labs, and I just threw the link in there for you. We're looking. They do some labs where they use, allow their AI, their artificial intelligence engine, to be like taken over and used by some people, and uh, to see what kind of tools come up with. And this was one, the auto draw that somebody came up with a drawing program with this. So it is outside. In fact, it's outside of the Google Suite. So it's not in our G Suite and not managed by all of our conditions and terms and stuff like that. So this is sort of separate. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of neat. So there's actually some some really there's some really interesting experiments that have come out of this, and then there's some really oddball ones that I don't know why they would be used. So, um, but it's, it's kind of cool to see people uh, people using this. So so that's 
Yeah, that's the fun one. That's the one that's is kind of cool and kind of interesting. Yes. All right, let's keep moving on. And we'll keep on keeping on here. And I'm gonna go to the next one, which is Canvas. Canvas, I know that there is a Canvas. If you just search Canvas, I believe you'll come up with a Canvas LMS, which is generally this one here. Uh, oh, I could be wrong. Anyway, there is a Canvas or maybe it's Canva. I can't remember exactly. That's an LMS, a learning management system out there that you can, I mean, it is what it is, right? It's another Moodle or Schoology or uh, Google Classroom or Teams or something like that. I'm not going to suggest that you go and spend any time in there. Um, it, it has some interesting stuff and it has some stuff that you don't, but it's not necessarily supported by Palliser and you're on your own if you jump into there. What we are looking for is the Canvas in Chrome. So I'll pull this up and then I'm going to drop the link in here so that everybody can see. Canvas.apps.chrome. So this is, uh, according to Google, this is, well, and everybody moving forward, this is called a progressive web app. So in the past on your Chromebook, on your Chromeboxes and stuff like that, you were able to, you were not enabled to install software like you used to be on a Windows machine or a Macintosh or something like that. So you could install apps and on the Chrome web store, there is still a section for apps, but essentially the apps were a glorified bookmark and they just pointed in, you know, here's the actual website, but excuse me, down here you had all of your apps listed. So we could see what our apps were and we could click on different ones. And there was, there was some things going on inside of there. Google is moving away from that platform to this called progressive web apps. What are essentially, they're the same thing. You're, you're just installing a shortcut on there, but they behave as though they're in their own window. And I'll show you in just at the end of this, how to install the progressive web app. I know that this is a progressive web app. Oops, I'm not uh, zooming in properly here. Because if I look up at my URL bar, I can see right here, there's a little plus. And if I arrow over it, it says install Chrome Canvas. That tells me that it's a progressive web app that I can install in this manner. And then it will open up in its own window. And uh, it just gives us, I don't know, it's a bit of a different flavor. It's the same tool whether you install it or you don't, but it gives it to you down in your Chrome uh, toolbar there. Let's start a new drawing. A little bit more of a refined feel to this tool. This tool looks more like we would expect from a painting tool. So we have our tools down the left-hand side, pencil, pen, felt, chalk, and eraser. Okay, and if you just arrow over it, all of them pop up. You have your different thicknesses, so again, we can adjust the size of all of our tools and we have our, our, our stronger color palette. We have our regular palette here, but we can also start to customize it and really dig into our, our different values. Or if you're using a color picker tool, uh, and if you come to the extension one next week, there's a, a really simple color picker extension and it will give you the hex code for any color out there. So if you want something to match exactly like you have it on a website or something, you can grab that hex code and you can match it up exactly. And uh, this gives you the ability to do that, which AutoDraw didn't. We'll just stick with regular black. And, and essentially it is as simple as that. Once we open this up, we're just gonna start you know, drawing. That guy's kind of boring. Our pen is there. You do see, I, I, if you notice down here, it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a pen bleed, so it almost gives you that sort of calligraphy feel. Not really that much, so but a little bit. If we do it again, you'll see it's a little thicker on one end than the other. And I think if I stop, it kind of bleeds a little bit, and so you can sort of see in different places how they're trying to mimic that effect. Uh, charcoal or sorry, chalk is kind of neat because chalk allows us to create it darker and darker with every pass. So just a really simple, I would argue, uh, drawing tool that's available to students. All right, I'm gonna pop back to the beginning. We're gonna start a new drawing, but this time I'm gonna do new drawing from image. So I have an image picked out here, I believe. This is one I took in the little lake back behind, uh, well, that we walked by, just a little muskrat there. 
So it lays down the picture of the image. Now I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna grab, let's say this tool, uh, let's grab a different color. And we'll start to just outline our muskrat. What the reason I wanted to show you that is because this guy does layers. So up here in the top right corner, we have our layers tool. We can see that I can turn off that back image and I can have just my front image available to us. So you want students to sort of trace, copy, sort of get that artistic feel going on, but they need to have that, that background. Um, this is where you can get them kind of popping in and out and seeing what they can do and then continue on. Or if you're like me and you need that exact same help if you're ever doing this, you take a great picture, maybe of a car, but then you sort of want to stylize it yourself to create that own work. So we're not worried about somebody else's work. We've created it ourselves and we can use our own anywhere. You can add additional layers. The layer that is highlighted is the one that you're working on. So if we add an additional layer and we want to go back to working on this one, it'll allow us then, oh, we should be able to, there we go. We're on that layer. So it's going to allow us any writing that we do is going to be on that layer. We'll turn those ones off so we could see it there. And if we want to put it on a different layer, Let's make this guy the active layer now. Oh, I lost one. So now this guy's our active layer. We can see because it's grayed. So any writing that we do on that one, let me make this a little bit thicker here. And, oh, sorry, should have shown you here. It has a different opacity, so you can make it in, in some of your tools. Some of your tools have different values inside of here, so you can make it a little bit more transparent or a little bit less. I don't, uh, oh, it does. It does have it in the charcoal. So we can make it really, really dark here. And then when we jump up to our tool, we can see that that layer only had that one. So, I mean, just uh, it's something that's kind of fun, something that's sort of neat to play with and, and gives you a, a bit more of a professional feel to, to, uh, to a tool that's free, that's online, that doesn't necessarily sync with our Google account. Um, but uh, it, it is all in there. Last thing we got going up here is we have save as image. So we can take that image and we can take our work and we can save it and export it so we can use it in something else. Again, it's coming out as a PNG. PNG are really small files as well. They're very light files to work with. So they're not gonna take up a massive amount of space. People that want to uh, do multiple layers and come back and do more editing, you probably do not want to save it as a PNG because when you export as a PNG, it squashes it all down. It doesn't let you bring it back and work in those layers again. So you sort of want to just leave it uh, until you're all done. The nice thing is if you are on the same device, it will hold on to your images. So I have a couple different images that I'm working that I was working on here. These two from this. This was one that I'd worked on before. When I was finished this one, this is for the Southern Alberta Student Film Festival, the logo that we were working on. Um, actually, I finished it on another device. So I had to start fresh again because I didn't have that available there. It doesn't sync with my account. It syncs with the device. All right, I told you about P or, uh, progressive web apps. Pop up here. Back to that plus, it says install Chrome Canvas. Do you want to install it? We're just going to say yes, and boom, it's there. It has the exact same menu, but if you look, it sort of looks like it's its own window. It gives it more of that traditional application style here, and it's not just you know another tab in your window. So, so Allison. For you, I'm going to caution you because now you're going to have 15 tabs plus 15 of these open. So you got to stay off of this one. But just <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but what you can do is uh, it just gives you a different a bit of a different vibe. All the tools are exactly the same inside of there. Everything that you need. Yeah. So no, I probably won't be that bad. And in fact, if you see if you click on the, the hot dog menu up here, it's given you the exact same tools, basically as you saw on your web browser up there. So. so those are the two that I wanted to highlight. I'm gonna stop presenting now. Um, they're, really, they're just kind of fun.
there's nothing nothing big and game changing about these. I think they're just fun tools to be aware of, fun tools uh, that you can uh, that you can use. So yeah, <laughs> a fourth monitor, um, fun tools that that you can use to create some of your own content if you want to. Uh, super easy, very, very easy to work with and, and very user friendly. So um, yeah, that, that was a quick one. I, I don't, I mean, really that was just a fun one to play with, but uh, I will be quiet now. If you have any questions, cool. If, if you, uh, if you're done, uh, thanks. Thanks for joining. I, I hope you got a little something out of this one. Uh, next week we have, we have three on the schedule. I have one, well, four, I have one for administrators on Monday, but then we have three on the schedule for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I'm actually working with Alberta tomorrow. Alberta tomorrow is a, uh, it's an Alberta organization, obviously that has a online site. Uh, it's, it's kind of environmentally, um, impact based, uh, not impact, but, uh, data recording based. Uh, students can record data. They can look at data from other students. It is a very, very interesting. It's a free site. Uh, it's a free tool online. Um, and they have specific curriculum connections with the Alberta curriculum. So I'm working with them to set up one for, I want to say, May the 5th. Uh, it's it's two weeks out here. And uh, it's going to be an hour long one. It's going to be a little bit longer. She wants to showcase their platform and stuff like that. So so that one's going to be coming out uh in a little bit here. I think it, I think it's going to be an interesting one. If nothing else to take a look at a uh, potential tool for you, but, uh, but here we go. I'm, I'm done. I will stop the recording now. I don't think anybody else needs to hear me and uh, I'll answer any questions you have. So, and if you leave, thank you for joining us and uh, have a great week. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. So.